Wow. A very good morning to you, our viewers of Capuchin TV. Thank you for joining us this live event coming to you live from St. Thomas Aquinas Seminary here in Karen in the Archdiocese of Nairobi as today they will be celebrating 60th anniversary or you can also call it the golden jubilee since uh, this institution was started and we'll just to have uh, uh, some of the interview with the seminarians around here all the students here and we'll get to know the history of this school of this institution when it was begun in the in the year 1963 a very interesting story because uh, we all know in our history that kenya our country kenya gained uh, its independence on the year 1963 and joining me is uh, one of the seminarian who will be introducing himself telling us his name and uh, what which year he is here in seminary and just to give us a history of uh, this seminary karibu sana good morning Sanche, good morning how are you doing and how do you feel about this day as you will be celebrating your 60th anniversary? Asante sana. Kwanza kabisa, naitwa mseminari Joseph Sabato. Natoka jimbo la... Niko katika mwaka wangu wata... Kwa hivyo mtakatifu... Leo inasherekea miaka stini tangu kuanzishwa. Na ni mother seminary vile neza sema kwa sababu katika eh, nchi yetu ya Kenya tuko na sehemu kuu lakini hii ndio ilianzishwa rasmi kama mwaka 1963 na hivi tunasherekea miaka 60 tangu kuanzia kuzaa seminari zingine kama mtakatifu Agostino wa Mabanga kule wanafanya filosofia pia eh, St Matthias Mlumba St Mary's Small eh, kule mo, eh, Molo na hivi leo eh, kwa hivyo nina furaha sana Eh, kuwa eh, katika historia hii ya seminari yetu. Asante sana. Na tunajua kwa, kwa kufahamu kwamba shule hii wakati na maaskofu wa Katoliki hapa hili ilikuwa na jina na fuu before wabadilishe kwa St Thomas Aquinas Seminary. Je, yeah, tueleze ilikuwa inaitwaje zamani? Ya yeah, ikianzishwa ilikuwa inaitwa Regional Seminary of Kenya. Na ilikuwa inasimamia E, wale wote ambao walikuwa wanasomea upadri uwe jimboni na pia uwe kwenye shirika wote walikuwa wanapitia hapa lakini baada ya muda fulani wakati wa jimbo ndio ikaweza kubadilishwa jina ikawa e, St Thomas Aquinas Seminary yani kuashiria tu e, wale wana jimbo wote ambao wanatoka Kenya sasa shirika kutoka e, mataifa mengine Asante sana na tunakutakia kila laheri kama Kapuchin TV. Alafu pia kuna mwingine mwanafunzi anajiunga nami sasa hivi atueleze jina lake anaitwaje na pia ma, mafanikio yake anajisi vipi kuwa uh, miongoni mwa seminari seminary uh, from here in uh, St Thomas Aquinas. Tuambie jina lako na je wajisiki vipi? Thank you. My name is seminarian Bethel Cheroyot Koech from the Catholic Diocese of Nakuru. And today, really, we thank the Lord as we celebrate uh, 60 years since the establishment of our seminary. And it's quite a historic day for us. We are happy as we thank the Lord for granting us those many years uh, to study and to be formed spiritually, socially, pastorally, and even academically. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, our view, as you can see uh, behind me, the procession has already begun. But I'll, I'll just give you a few details about uh, uh, this uh, school, or school or institution, rather, is that uh, they have not only been able to produce our priests, but also the bishops and archbishops. And just to mention uh, one uh, uh, who was the first, uh, very first uh, bishop, uh, it, uh, uh, um, Archbishop Emeritus uh, Zacchaeus Oko. Uh, he, um, Archbishop Philip Agnolo uh, of the Archdiocese of Nairobi, and just another bishop who was just installed uh, last week on Saturday, Bishop uh, uh, Juma, Henry Juma Odonya. Um, 
uh, the Bishop of Kitale. And uh, just uh, to see uh, the procession uh, is that uh, uh, the main celebrant of this uh, event uh, will be His Excellency Bart Van Megan, the Apostolic Nuncio to Kenya and South Sudan. And because I don't want to give uh, a lot of details about uh, this event, because you'll be able to interact with the students or the seminarians uh, from here uh, later on, uh, hoping so. As Capuchin TV, we want to congratulate the St. Thomas Aquinas Seminary Fraternity for this achievement and wishing them the very best. And as you can look at uh, uh, celebration here, reaching 60s, 60 years uh, anniversary or rather golden jubilee. And uh, as you can see, the beautiful, the beautiful celebration, I think, this and uh, leaving you with the pictures uh, and the audio from the uh, in Karen, Karibuni Gote, and may God bless you. My name is God is good and all the time Your Excellence Hubert Van Meken Your Graces Your Lordship The Reverend Father Ngaruya the Deputy General Secretary of the KCCB Our Priest of 
Epiphania, Reverend Fathers, Religious Men and Women, our dear seminarians, the auxiliary staff of St. Thomas Aquinas, all our invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, God is good once again. Allow me on behalf of the seminary community of St. Thomas Aquinas Seminary on this occasion's day of the inauguration of the, our Diamond Jubilee, extend a word of welcome to all of you. We appreciate and thank you very much for spending time to be with us today, especially our alumni who have come from very far. We really treasure you because uh, when we see you, when our young men see you, then they see a lot of hope. Then St. Thomas, good things come out of it. St. Thomas is really the mother of all seminaries in Kenya. Um, before all others was St. Thomas. And really, we are grateful to be with you. We would like to thank Almighty God for his unfailing support which he has blessed and granted to the East Seminary for the last 60 years. We have achieved countless blessings and support from our bishops, the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops. And as we mark this day, we would like to Thank the many benefactors, both who are living and those who have gone before us, those within our country here or abroad. Their work and contributions can be felt in the Church of Kenya today and beyond. We pay tribute to the many formators and auxiliary staff members those who are living, those who have passed, for the support and the work they really they have worked, they have done in this place, especially in the work of formation. Your Excellency, through you, with you and in you, we are united to the Holy Father. in employing on asking our Mother Mary to keep on interceding for the work of our son, that we who have been called may promote, may nurture the vocations which have been placed in our hands, so that whatever you do will always be for the, clear, uh, for the glory, for the greater glory of God. And now, with a lot of joy and happiness, I welcome you, Your Excellency, to lead us in this Eucharist celebration, which is really a thanksgiving and a praise. May I ask you that you put all our hands to welcome His Excellency in this Mass. So all of us, one, Your Excellency. In, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Peace be with you, and with your spirit. Sixty years of major seminary, St. Thomas Aquinas, as it was said in the introduction, the mother of all seminaries in Kenya. And... Uh, I was thinking when we did the Episcopal consecration in Kitale and in my sermon, I quoted the saying of Pope Francis that the church is like a field hospital on the battlefield of life. If the church is the 
field hospital, then the seminary is the maternal clinic within that hospital where they deliver the babies, the babies who are the young priests that come into the church. And let's face it, babies, we have all been, and in many ways we still are. In fact, that is the interesting thing about it. Even though you might be old, like myself and some other bishops here, in your heart you still feel that you're like a boy in many ways. So to say, your spirit remains at a certain age. And as we are all boys and babies, in a sense, we also do stupid things that do not fit our age. We call that sin. We call that the deeds that do not fit in the salvation plan of God. Therefore, at the beginning of this Eucharist, as we meet Christ in the Eucharist, receive his body and blood, and through him have communion with the Father and the Holy Spirit, therefore, at the beginning of this Eucharist, we want to ask the Lord that he may have mercy on us, that he may wash away everything that keeps us away from us, in order that we will be able to celebrate this Eucharist and this Jubilee according to his holy will. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Tuna kuwe shimu na kuwa 
Let us pray. O God, who made St. Thomas Aquinas outstanding in his zeal for holiness and in his study of sacred doctrine, grant us, we pray, that we may understand what he taught and imitate what he accomplished. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
a reading from the book of wisdom. I prayed and understanding was given me. I called upon God and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepters and thrones and I accounted wealth as nothing in comparison with her. Neither did I liken to her any priceless game, because all gold is but a little sun in her sight, and silver will be accounted as clay before her. I loved her more than health and beauty, and I chose to have her rather than light, because her radiance never ceases. May God grant that I speak with judgment and have thoughts worthy of what I have received, for he is the guide even of wisdom and corrector of the wise. For both we and our wants are in his hand, as are all understanding and skill in crafts. The word of the Lord. O oh Lord, teach me your statutes. 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 against 
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be urgent in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, and exhort. By unfailing in patience and in teaching, for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own likings and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander into myths. As for you, always be steady, enduring in suffering and to do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. The word of the Lord.
You have one Father who is in heaven, and you have one Master, the Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. According to Matthew, Lord be to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, You are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are whole brethren. And call no man on heart father, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called masters, for you have one master, the Christ. He who is the greatest among you shall be your servant, Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. We were singing the Psalms and it was said, Lord, let me know your statutes. I was thinking about the Old Testament, how God had revealed himself to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but was basically nameless. And how then when finally he appeared to Moses in Egypt and wanted to send Moses to Pharaoh. Moses was begging him to reveal his name and God answered him, I am who I am. God in a sense did did not want to reveal himself entirely and completely at that point. And in fact, if you have studied Hebrew, then you know there is the name of God, the Tetragram, which no Jew would ever pronounce. In fact, it would be the high priest who once a year on Yom Kippur 
the day of sacrifice, would enter in the holiest of holy of the temple and whispering would pronounce that name once a year on behalf of all the people of Israel, he only, bringing a sacrifice of expiation for the sins of the people of Israel. It was only there in the holiest of holy where the people of Israel believed that God was present in a cloud in the Shekinah that so to say a secret conversation was going on between the high priest on the one hand and God himself on the other hand. God was basically unknown. Remember how Abraham felt that he had to sacrifice his son Isaac and how later on Jacob was fighting with an angel like a demon who was trying to overcome him in the middle of the night and that demon, that angel had to flee when the sun was rising and from that point onward Jacob was called Israel because as it was said he had struggled with God himself Moses leads the people out of Israel and they come to the Mount of Sinai where God once again reveals himself to Moses. And this time around, something special happens. God gives the Ten Commandments. For the first time, a people on earth, so to say, got a code of conduct so as to know how to behave with their God. Lord, let me know your statutes. It is not so much about submission. It's not about so much about the boss and the slave. But it is much more about a relationship like you would have in any marriage or even in a friendship where at a certain point you start to understand how the other works and what to say and not to say and how to behave with the other in order to keep this relationship wholesome and healthy and away from tension. That is what the Ten Commandments were about. While other people, other nations were bringing sacrifice and upon sacrifice in the hope that they were, would be able to appease their gods, their whimsical gods who today would like this and tomorrow would like like that. The God of Israel was a God with whom you could have a conversation. A God with whom you could live a God who up to a certain extent was predictable as long as you followed up certain rules. Philosophy at a seminary is a bit like that. It is about coming to know the basic rules of life. Because, of course, many ways philosophy, as it is taught nowadays, not only in seminaries, but also at universities, is about the metaphysics, is about why are the things the way they are. But in the time of the Greeks who basically developed the whole thought about philosophy, it was much more about a way of life. How to live a sound life how to live a healthy life, a balanced life. Philosophia, the love for wisdom. Like later on in the Bible, I think it is in the letters of John, you have 
Philotios, let's look by the way, you have Philotios, the one who loves God, while Philosophia is about the one who loves wisdom. So the seminary, these first years of philosophy are about intellectual knowledge, sure, but they're also very much, and maybe even in the first place, about human formation, in order to develop a sound way of human life. The documents of the Holy See, of the Church, speak about that very clearly. I think it's a basic document, Optatum Tutius, and then, of course, also Pastores Dabo Vorbis, that the seminary is much more than intellectual formation. It's about intellectual formation, it's about human formation, it's about spiritual formation, it's about pastoral formation. And none of these are to be considered separate from each other, because they are all connected to each other. And from there, then you go into theology. So to say, you have put a basis in your life, you have disciplined yourself, through your formation a sound foundation was put for a sound way of life, by the way, being a priest or not a priest, a Christian, it really doesn't matter. It's about being rooted in that wisdom. The wisdom that comes with the Old Testament, the wisdom that comes with the New Testament. And there is this switch, so to say, into the New Testament where God becomes flesh in the Son of Mary. And God, the Son of Mary, is called Jesus, which means as much as God saves us. So to say that is the ultimate revelation about God. That is the way God wants to be known. Not anymore. I am who I am. So to say, keep out. This is not your business. I am who I am but a new name is coming up. God who saves. God who has saved his people Israel through all these years, 2,000 and more, and God who continues to save and in ultimate salvation now in Christ. And it is that what we study in theology. That word, Logos, about God, Theos. Or even Logos, which in Greek also means as much as the sense of God. By the way, beautifully put, thinking of it. Because having a sense of God, it also says something about like, nearly like inkling of God. Something like, which you cannot even express anymore in words, because it goes deeper than your rational knowledge. Thomas Aquinas, patron saint of this, of this seminary, was probably the greatest theologian in the Catholic Church and in Christianity. He had a photographic memory and mind. And he would surround himself by four scribes. And he would dictate one sentence to the first scribe, another sentence to the second, and one one to the third, and another to the fourth, because he was speaking so quickly that people had a hard time keeping up with him. Therefore, it was from sentence to sentence people, and imagine this man would speak in Latin. He would speak four times as fast as they could write. And by the time he had finished his fourth sentence, it reminds me a bit when I was a seminarian, some of our teachers at the seminary would be like that. They would speak, uh, speak faster than you could take notes. And if you would ask him, he would say, pay attention. 
Imagine this Thomas of Aquinas, in the 25 years that he was active, he wrote 50 folio, folio volumes. That is about 50,000 pages. That would be equivalent to a 500 modern books. There is no author alive, I can tell you, who has written so much as St. Thomas did. Thomas Aquinas looked back on Moses' encounter with God as profoundly significant. In the book of Exodus, as I mentioned, Moses needs to be sent to Pharaoh by God. And Moses asks God, who shall I say is sending me? And God reveals his identity. I am who I am. Aquinas says that in that deep closure we discover the reason for created life being God the ultimate reality from which everything else in creation exists because as Aquinas explains to us God's essence it is to exist and we as any other cre creation we derive our existence from God and so the whole of creation is telling God's story. Creation reflects God's glory, God's beauty, God's order, God's meaning. The whole creation is full of God. Therefore also that in the scholastic philosophy and theology, there's this very famous sentence which of course all of us know, Fide querens intellectum, which means as much as faith is looking for understanding. That's the beautiful thing, by the way, about Christianity. You should never believe blindly. Faith should not be imposed on you in a sense that basically because in your own reasoning there's a rejection. No, we believe that faith has a rational foundation and therefore each and every one of us is allowed and even called to scrutinize our faith and our understanding of God. In that sense, by the way, Christianity is very different from Islam. I still recall I was at the United Nations in Geneva and being Holy See in observer state so we are the last one in the queue because first you get all the nations that are member states of United Nations. Then at the end you get Zimbabwe. Z then comes Holy See. And to our right hand there would be PLO, Palestinian Liberation Organization. That is the Palestinian Authority. Also they have an observer status at United Nations. And the deputy head of mission of that of the PLO was a young woman from Nablus, Fatima, Muslim girl. But of course very bright, very intelligent, otherwise she wouldn't be there as a representative of the PLO, of the Palestinian Authority. And many times we would have discussions basically, of course, about our work there at the United Nations. And sometimes also about religion, having myself served three years in Jerusalem and having myself also served in Ramallah where at that point Yasser Arafat was still the leader of the PLO. And one day she took me aside and she said to me, Abuna, father, I need to tell you something. I converted to Christianity. And I asked her, Leish Fatima, why? Shuda, what happened? And her answer was very interesting. She said to me, you know, in Islam, I'm not allowed to interrogate anything. I'm not allowed to question anything. I just have to accept it. I have to obey my faith. It is imposed on me. 
But for you Christians, it's different. You're allowed to reflect upon it. You're allowed to discuss it. You're allowed to scrutinize it in order to come to a deeper understanding of the faith. And Aquinas helps us in that, in understanding deeper the faith. Because Aquinas didn't see any inconsistency or disharmony between reason on the one hand and revelation on the other hand. Actually, coming to think of it in Greek, the word truth, as you all know better than me, is aletheia which is as much as the uncovering, the uncovering of what is hidden. And so revelation is that uncovering, the uncovering of what is hidden. Who sees me sees the Father, Jesus says to Philip. Jesus is like the uncovering of the invisible Father. God's revelation, Aquinas said, is not the denial of reason, but the perfection of reason. But pay attention, God has always more to reveal to us, and this will be in harmony with that what God has already revealed. By the way, that's again the beauty about Christianity, is that you can be 150 years old, but each and every day you reflect on Holy Scripture and you are in a relationship with God, something new and beautiful and adventurous will come out in your relationship with God. So to say, you grow with God, God, God grows with you. The greatness and the glory of the wonder of God's essence is beyond description because God is always more, more than we can describe, understand and experience. God is always more. As St. Anselm would, would say, Deus es it quod nikil maius cogitari posit. Now, who is a good Latinist? So God is that of which we cannot think greater. God goes beyond our thinking. That's, by the way, I think many of us priests at Shala, that's at least what I hope, have that experience. Like, when you grow in your relationship with God and in your meditation and contemplation, you come to a point that what you experience in your prayer, basically, you cannot even preach about. You just lack words for it. it there's no way of conveying it to the other. It just doesn't work anymore. And when you have to preach to the people in a sense, a bit like Jesus himself, in order to be able to explain to others with very human words what this God of all is all, is all about. By the way, it reminds me very much of, and we just buried him of, our emeritus Pope, Pope Benedict. Pope Benedict, who from a theological, moral, spiritual point was very much on the Mount Tabor. But he, as a very good professor, that's the way I knew him, I didn't really know him as a Pope, but much more as a Cardinal and professor, he had that gift of explaining difficult things in an easy way, like Jesus himself. He, the Son of God, who lived in all glory and from before all times with the Father, came down to us to explain to us with parables and easy wording what this God of all is all, all, is, is all about. Thomas Aquinas' pursuit started at the age of five, imagine, at, eight, at five years old when he had asked the teacher, now Magister, what is God? And the teacher had no answer. And Aquinas spent the rest of his life attempting to 
discover that basic question, what is God? We could have guessed where, where God's revelation would, where, who could have guessed where God's revelation would lead Thomas Aquinas in the end? I think you know that a few months before Thomas died, he had a revelation, a mystical experience of Jesus, a foretaste of heaven. And it so radically transcended the words of Aquinas' trade. Aquinas knew then that this was the end of his scholarly work. He stopped writing. He stopped writing words because he understood that his words could never cover what he had experienced there in that mystical experience with Jesus. Peter Kreeft, who is an Aquinas scholar in the United States, uses the analogy of a Zen Buddhist wisdom, where it is said, a finger is useful to point out to the moon, but woe to the fool who mistakes the finger for the moon. Aquinas had met his maker. And Aquinas stopped his intellectual work, stopped trading words, and gave himself over to the attraction of God's glory. And his life's work, the Summa Theologica, would never be finished, was left unfinished. Even to the point that his students had to stop him from burning it, because he felt it is of no use what I've written, I need to burn all this because he had seen the beauty of God. Maybe you are not Thomas Aquinas, but also you don't need to be. You are you, one of a kind. What is God's revelation to you that is uncontestable and perhaps unexplainable? What have you come to know to be true in life? The life that fills you and the life that surrounds you. Isn't that also, I think, the call of every seminarian and maybe still being at the seminary at times it is difficult to understand that these studies of philosophy and especially your theology, they help you to grow not only as a human person but also to mature in Christ, to become a mature man or woman in Christ, as St. Paul writes. And that theology is not only about studying and doing exams and passing them and getting as quickly as possible through it, but it's also very much about interiorizing it in order that it becomes part of your spirituality. As one student once in Khartoum asked me, and I thought it was a very to the point question, he asked me, Father, how can I pray with theology? How can theology help me to grow in my relationship with God? That is something that for each and every one of us is to be found out, because each and every one has a different story, a different relationship with God. What have you come to know at the deepest level of your life to be absolutely true about life, about love, and the source of it all? By the way, don't think, and I speak here also to the priest, that once you have finished your theology studies, that then you know enough. That is only an illusion. In fact, you know nothing. You still have to start all over again once you are in the parish. And that knowledge that you have acquired needs to take flesh in your life and needs to take flesh in your preaching. And like Jesus and like Thomas, like Pope Benedict, you have to descend to the level of people in order that what you have learned can be translated in 
meaningful words in daily life so that normal people find solace in your words, may be encouraged by your words, may feel inspired by your words. In the end, Thomas Aquinas claimed his identity not as a scholar, but as a child of God. At the end of his life, Aquinas said that the soul is like an uninhabited world that comes to life only when God lays his head against us. The soul is like an uninhabited world that comes to life only when God lays his head against us. By the way, the image is very interesting and somebody who is a bit more biblical, they understand immediately about St. John who puts his head against the heart of Jesus at the Last Supper. And here it is God's head who puts his head out to us. So to say, wants to hear and to see what is going on in our soul and wants to understand our movements. What is going on in your heart? God asks us. Not as a severe judge, but not even as a professor of the seminary, because professors of seminaries can be terrible. But much more as a friend as a father, or maybe even more as a mother. We call God a father, but of course in many ways he is a mother. Like a mother knows her son or daughter comes home, and maybe even more with sons she has that than with daughters. And the son comes home and she knows already there's something not okay. And she will ask her child, tell me what is going on? Why are you the way you are today? What happened? So to say, she's putting her ear on your heart, wanting to listen. Basically, it works, of course, the other way around, because coming to think of it, the child, the mother will take the child and put it against her own heart. And then she understands from the heartbeat of her child what is going on and we'll try to console it and so it is with God himself the soul is like an uninhabited world that comes to life only when God lays his hand against us so you see we find only life when we are in God because he is the source of all life and existence The delight of God looking at you. Of course, Thomas Aquinas revered intellect, revered understanding. But at the end, it was melded by love, by loving knowledge. Therefore, also, as Pope Benedict would not get tired to repeat True theology is always a kneeling theology, a theology you do on your knees. It's not something, so to say, that it's only for behind your desk. In the early centuries of Christian monasticism, this was called putting your head into your heart. Putting your head into your heart. Finally, when I was as young as you are, I had another life. Very few people here know about it. I was a Benedictine monk, lived in a contemplative community. Basically, once the door was closed behind you, you were separate from the world. 
was 1982-83. What I've learned there was the meaning of silence. There was no radio, there was no TV, of course there was no computer, there was no internet, there was no mobile phone, there was no contact with home. But it is in the silence that we come to know about God. That is maybe my final advice to especially you people of the 21st century, where mobile and mobile phone, computer and internet and social media and WhatsApp and Twitter and TikTok and whatever you have is so prominent. Be aware how it disperses you. Be aware on how it distracts you. Be aware on how it reduces your concentration, diminishes your concentration. I still go back to that same monastery, by the way, each and every time I go to the Netherlands in March, probably I'll be there again for two weeks. And what I always see in those monks, many of them my friends and colleagues, when they study, it's like they pick it up immediately because they're not distracted. And when they pray, you can see how they sink away or fall asleep, by the way, and how they sink away in a deeper dimension of our world. That is what I would wish for all of us, to have silent times in our day where we turn our phone off, put it in a drawer, put it on silent, don't look at it, at least for an hour or two, if you manage. And give that time to God and to study. And try to expand that time each and every time again in order that the time that God gives us, we would give back to God. People who know me, they know that there's a famous saying that I repeat over and over again, and that is also true for seminarians, for all of us. There is Simone Weil, who was a famous Jewish mystic of the 20th century, a young woman living in Paris, in, it, in France, and she lived, by the way, through the Second World War. Nothing dramatic happened to her like so many other Jews. Remember, nine million Jews, eight million Jews were killed in the gas chambers. She was never touched by that, but Simone was quite sickly. Many days she would be on her bed. But she had a very mystical experience of the God, the God of Israel. And she would over and over repeat as a kind of encouragement to other people, le temps et la patience de Dieu, which means as much as time is the patience of God. God gives us time. God gives us time to grow. I still remember my spiritual father at the seminary. By the way, another point for all of you. Go frequently to your spiritual father. Do not see it as a punishment. Try to be open with your, holy fa with your spiritual father in order that there's a true conversation going on there, in order that you may really grow in your human formation and in your spiritual formation. Anyway, the spiritual father, a great man, by the way, died long ago, a Jesuit one of the greatest in the Netherlands. I came to him and we had a conversation on an issue and I was deeply disappointed in myself. And I said even to my spiritual father, I said, Father de Vries, I'm, I don't think I can be a seminarian, that is not going to work. And he said to me, Bert, we have eternity. You don't need to do everything at once. Do it step by step. Grow in holiness. Grow in human formation. 
grow in that deep relationship with God. Step by step. As God patiently did with the people of Israel, as he does with each and every one of us. Because time is the patience of God. Amen. God that has been broken in our midst, let us be challenged by this word, and after which we'll arise and profess our faith together. Let us arise. What is it about? You see? What is it about? You see? Together, together we want to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, the life from God, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, gathered as one to celebrate the good things we have received from our God, let us ask him on the intercession of St. Thomas Aquinas to prompt in us the prayers that are worthy of his hearing. Sala kwa hajili ya kanisa. Mungu mwenyezi wa milele Tunaniombea kanisa letu takatifu katoliki Uibariki uongozi wake Papa mtakatifu Francesco Maskofu Papadre Mashemasi Watawa waki ume na waki ke Uwajaze kima yako Waweze kuli ubiri neno lako Na kuli ongo za kanisa kwako Uwabariki wa umini wote 
waweze kuishi kwa mapendo na umoja wawe wajasiri kuitetea imani pokea ombi letu baba mungu pokea ombi letu E Mungu Baba Mwenyezi wa milele Tunakushukuru kwa ajili ya taifa letu la Kenya na mataifa yote Tunawaombea viongozi wote Uwajalie hekima ya kuongoza watu wako kwa unyenyekevu kama wa mtakatifu Toma wa Aquino ili tuishi kwa amani umoja na mapendo pokea ombi letu baba Mungu pokea ombi letu E Mungu Baba Mwenyezi wa milele tunakushukuru kwa kibaji cha uhai na maisha pola pia tunaombea wote ambao ni wagonjwa uwape uponyaji wa haraka wenye njari ya kila siku na wote wanaohitaji msaada wa sala zetu uwape mahitaji kulingana na mapenzi yako pokea hombi letu baba Mungu pokea hombi letu pokea hombi letu baba E Mungu Baba Mwenyezi wa milele tunakushukuru kwa ajili ya jumuiya yetu ya mtakatifu Toma wa Kwino tunawaombea mapandri warezi mashemasi wa seminari wafanyikazi na wafadhili wetu ili kupitia kwa maisha ya mtakatifu Toma wa Kwino tuwe na imani thabiti kutumia nguvu akiri na vipawa vyote kutangaza ukweli wa Kristo Pokea obile tu baba Mungu Pokea obile tu Pokea obile tu baba Mungu May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight O oh Lord so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits through Christ our Lord amen, amen.
Let us not be Moses here. Kinacho kwanza ni kupeana sadaka yetu tunaomba wale wanaofanya kazi kwenye sakristi waafikie wa Kristo kule walipo ili usiwe na msongamano wa mapambano.
mara moja tutaleta wakati wako shukrani kwa hivyo tutaongozwa na hostia na divai kisha wengine tufuate nyuma
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice of your hearts for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His creatures. May the sacrifice which we gladly present on the feast day of Blessed Thomas Aquinas be pleasing to you, O God, for taught by him, we too Give ourselves entirely to you in praise, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> The Mystery of Faith Umbola Imani Yesu Ali Kufa Yesu Ali Fufuka Hata Wakuja Tena Umbola Imani Yesu Ali Kufa Yesu Ali Fufuka Yesu Christu wali kufa, Yesu Christu wali fufuka, Yesu Christu watakuja kuwa umuli mwengu. Yesu Christu wali kufa, Yesu Christu wali fufuka, Yesu Christu watakuja kukumuli mwengu. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension of heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, that we may obtain inheritance with your elect, especially the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Job's her spouse, with the blessed Apostle, truly as martyrs, St. Thomas, and all the saints, on constant in your presence, to life for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, Philip, our Bishop, his auxiliary David, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O oh merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as they are passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Mohammed Sote, Kosala Bada Kumuni. Let us pray. Through Christ the teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ the living work bread, that on the feast of blessed Thomas Aquinas they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Wimbo wa shukrani kila mmoja wetu anayo sababu ya kumwambia Mungu asante kwa hivyo tukieni wimbo mzuri tumshukuru Mungu kwa zawadi ya miaka sitini. Zinadamu wange nipanema Kesho wange choka kunipa zaidi Lakini wewe hauna kikomo Wala mbuwa ya koa ina majira Mwonye shambuwa Kwa walio jangwani Kwa washajua Kwa kabahini Kwa Sana, Nita Simulia Miji, that's only where my yes, 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 only where my yes,
Yesu ni mwema Yesu ni mwema Nitasimulia inji Yesu ni mwema Yesu ni mwema nasi tukiongozwa na kwaya kuimba wimbo wa mwisho tutasubiria kipindi kifuatacho The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for God's blessings. Bow your heads for God's blessings. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. May he turn your steps towards himself and show you the path of charity and peace. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth in peace. Mass is handed. Thanks be to God.
The lady responsible. Let us give an applause uh, to the cutting of the 60 years uh, Jubilee cake. Kata, 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 kata usio gope, kata tule sote, kata, 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 kata usio gope, 
kata tule wote kata 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 makofi your excellency may pray for us father and the son the holy spirit amen bless us o lord and these thy gifts which are about to receive from your bounty through christ our lord amen, amen. May we invite the deacons in our midst to come and help us distribute the cake. The deacons in our midst, please come help us distribute the cake. Deacons in our midst. Nadhani njongeni ili tuweze kuafikia haraka. Kama umekaa mbali nje na ua letu tunaomba ujongee karibu. Ashes tafadhali tunaviti hapa na hapa mbele.
very good afternoon, dear viewer. As you can see uh, on your screen right now, we have uh, pictures of the cake and the distribution of the cake. We are here at St. Thomas Aquinas Seminary in Karen in the Archdiocese of Nairobi as uh, we help them and uh, we witness as they mark uh, their 60th anniversary or golden jubilee celebrations and uh, as you have been able to witness uh, is that um his excellency bart van megan has been able to help uh, uh, the bishop uh, Archbishop of Philip Agnolo in the cutting of the cake and uh, it's a uh, St. Thomas Aquinas uh, Seminary Golden Jubilee uh, since this uh, institution was started or began uh, in the year 1963 as the same year uh, the Kenya, our country Kenya got uh, its uh, independence and uh, right now uh, people are just enjoying to have uh, this beautiful cake and uh, just feel how it tastes. And uh, as 60 years celebration, we believe and uh, we are going to witness on your behalf, oh viewer, that the cake is also very delicious. And also following uh, after this uh, distribution of the cake, uh, there will be... Um, speeches uh, from the uh, rector of uh, uh, this seminary, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, and uh, many other people, our bishop uh, and uh, persons concerned. We have Father Christopher Songa, and maybe just to mention uh, other few uh, people that will be involved uh, in, and uh, we can just take a, a look uh, and um, have the audio from this side. And Chairman, Seminary Episcopal Commission. We shall also listen to a speech from Most Reverend Philip Agnolo, Archbishop of Nairobi. And our last speech will come from His Excellency Hubertus Maria Van Megan, the Apostolic Nuncio to Kenya and South Sudan. As we settle down, May I welcome our student leader, Seminarian Wilson Kamau. Seminarian Wilson Kamau, welcome. Let us clap for him as he comes. Your Excellence, Most Reverend Bart Van Megan, Your Grace Philip Agnolo, the Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Nairobi, Your Grace Maurice Mohatia Makumba, the Archbishop of the Diocese of, of the Archdiocese of Kisumu, Your Grace Peter Karioki, Your Lord Chief Dominic Kimegich, Very Reverend Rectors, Priest, Deacons, religious men and women, government dignitaries and distinguished guests, lay Christian faithful, and my brother seminarians, Mungu ni Mwema, Nakila Wakati. This Damod Jubilee celebration can be, a, can be called a time of gratitude because we have so much to be grateful for. This Jubilee is a milestone, an occasion to be celebrated to recall the amazing and marvelous ways in which the seminary has fulfilled its vision and mission in imparting the marvelous ways in which the semi, the marvelous ways in which holistic formation and molding of priests has been achieved who now in the field bear the torch of love which our society and church needs i would like to connect our damod jubilee theme which is tradition, formation, 
and synodality to the words of Pope Francis who said in his apostolic letter in 2014 on the occasion of the year of consecrated life that look at the past with gratitude, live the present with passion, and embrace the future with hope. Being students here at St. Thomas Aquinas has brought us enormous prestige. Thus, we take pride from being under the patronage of the angelic doctor, a great philosopher, and an understanding theologian, and to belong to the Mother Seminary. We are grateful to the Propaganda Fee Day, which funded the establishment of this institution, and also we are very proud of the architects who are able to build a complex single structure, and more especially the magnificent chapel that we have here. On living the present with passion, we who are in formation are very proud of the liturgical life in STAS, St. Thomas Aquinas Seminary. It is one of the best experiences. The awareness, this awareness has come to us also through our interactions with people who come to visit us and the compliments that they give. In St. Thomas Aquinas, there is no liturgical detail that is left in class or in practice. On this point, I cannot fail to mention that we have the best choir around. And our mass having is unique such that many parishes in the Archdiocese of Nairobi send their mass servers and lectors to come and learn from our serving. We are grateful to God for the church tradition that is being imparted in us through the culture and the traditions that are particular to St. Thomas Aquinas Seminary. For instance, there is a tradition of arriving in the chapel earlier for private prayers before the community prayers begin, such that when you arrive at time, you feel like you are late. So we have a culture and a tradition of the kneeling theology as you reflected in your homily. The tradition also, we have a tradition of reviewing and summarizing articles especially on scripture, and also allow me, Your Excellency, to quote you. You said sometimes uh, uh, seminary professors can be very dangerous. So in the areas of articles, <laughs> we have experienced we have experienced a tradition of which is particular to St. Thomas Aquinas of reviewing and writing book reviews. These are some of the traditions that you are proud for, to mention but a few. In a special way, Your Excellency, we want to thank you for gracing this occasion and also for being our friend. We cannot forget that this was your first seminary you visited when you were made the nuncio to Kenya and South Sudan. This was your first seminary to visit. And we cannot even fail to remember the words that you taught us about detachment and you told us the devil enters through the pocket. Since you are meeting the Holy Father soon on his proper visit to South Sudan, we would like to send you our greetings and our best wishes to him and also request him to pray for us as we pray for him. We congratulate the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops, our rector, the staff and student, for your valuable contribution in terms of dedication and commitment to STARS. And we thank all our benefactors and benefactoress for your generosity in its being and in its becoming. We thank the Catholic media, especially Radio Maria, Nairobi, Kenya, for transmitting daily prayers and holy mass from St. Thomas Aquinas. We also thank Capchin TV for advertising this occasion and transmitting it live and also for joining with us. In this spirit of synodality, they have demystified formation and help a lot in the work of evangelization. Finally, I would like to conclude with an inspiration quote from a great philosopher, Soren Kierkegaard, who said, life can only be understood backwards because we are celebrating 60 years, but it must be lived 
forward. Thank you. Let us clap for our head student, uh, reminding us where we have come from. Thank you very much, uh, Seminarian Wilson. May I now invite a very reverend uh, Father John Kiplimolele, Rector St. Thomas Aquinas Seminary. Father Rector Karibu. Asante Father Simbe. Vijana Mupo. Mupo. Hoye. Hoye. Hapa tuko. Your Excellency, sometimes that's part of our greetings. When we are on our own, and sometimes we feel proud when we interact with our students freely and share our experience. Your Excellency, Hubert Van Macken, the Apostolic Nuncio to Kenya and South Sudan, your Gracious Archbishop's present, my Lord Bishop Dominic Mengich, the very Reverend Father Ngaruya, the Deputy Secretary to KCCB, all our alumni, Reverend Fathers present, religious and women present, our dear seminarians, the staff, Auxiliary of St. Thomas Aquinas, all our invited guests who have come from far and from near, ladies and gentlemen, God is good, and all the time. So we say welcome to St. Thomas, as I said before. The motto of our seminary is, as the Father sent me, so do I send you. It is the command of Jesus himself. When he was talking and sending to his disciples, as the Father sent me, so I sent you. St. Thomas took over this motto and has become the leading words of formation. So far, the seminary has trained over 2,600 priests who we know they are working in this country and some are even working elsewhere. A number of them have taken responsive positions. They are working in our dioceses. Some are chaplains, either in hospitals or in the security forces. Um, a number of them, of course, are working in our parishes, very active. And some are animating vocations. Some of the alumni of this place are not only, are not only priests, but they have become bishops. And I'm happy to say that to all those who are present here, right from Miss Grace, the oldest, Cairo, who was a student here, uh, Philip Agnolo, the Archbishop of Nairobi, was a student here. He was a very good footballer, very good footballer. And then, of course, Makumba himself, he was also a very good footballer. And then, of course, Dominic Mengich was a very good for, for Le Pola. We used to play together. So, among others, among others who have not come here. So, St. Thomas has really trained and it has, it has produced good fruits. As a house of formation, the seminary is a home where we come together to reflect on the Word of God do the adoration of the blessed sacrament, and the seminary or our students have an opportunity to reflect prayerfully on the, on the word of God. 
At 60, our home is getting age and requires some face lifting. Of course, those of us who are here some years back, uh, you realize that there was some change which was, which was done some years back. And the institution has remained strong. So it needs some improvement and refurbishment. Some of the key items and areas of attention include paintings of the building. If you check uh, the other side there, I think it was painted during the 1960s, so it needs some painting. So we need some repair of leakages, wall cracks, cleaning and repair of students' a pollution block, and the rest. So we have come so that we share together our needs, as we share our joy, we share also our challenges, and we see how best we can help each other. As we inaugurate the Diamond Celebration, in the spirit of synodality, of participation, communion and mission, I, on behalf of St. Thomas Aquinas community, make a kind request to the alumni who are here present. Some could be seeing us now in the TV. That uh, friends who have come here and who are also listening to us, and people Father, let us give him a very hearty clap. May I invite our rector to invite uh, the chairman, Seminary Episcopal Commission for us. Thank you, Father Simbe. And now may I take this opportunity to Welcome our father of the seminary, the chair of the, the chair of the seminary Episcopal Commission, His Grace Morris Mahatia Makumba. Makofi Kwake. Thank you very much, Father Rector. Your Excellency the Apostolic Nuncio, Your Graces, my Lord Bishop, Reverend Fathers. Our dear seminarians and our guests who have come to join with us on this day of the celebration of our Diamond Jubilee of St. Thomas Aquinas. God is good. And all the time, first of all, I bring you the greetings of the chairman of the conference, Archbishop Martin Kivuva Msonde, who has, um, would have liked to be here today but because of uh, commitments that he could not delegate, he was not able to be here physically. He joins us spiritually and wishes the entire community of St. Thomas Aquinas a most blessed celebration of uh, Diamond Jubilee. Please receive his greetings. <laughs> Secondly, on behalf of the Commission for Seminaries, On behalf of the Commission for Seminaries, which I, I chair, and the Vice Chairman is uh, Bishop Peter Kiara of Marsabit. The other members are Bishop Joseph Obanyi of Kakamega, Bishop Joseph Mongela of Kitui, all our rectors, our four rectors from the National Seminaries, from St. Augustine, St. Matthias, St. Mary's and St. Thomas Aquinas, together with the chairman of the vocations directors, as Father Vincent Simba from uh, uh, the Diocese of Kisi. We bring you a message of congratulation and we wish the entire seminary community the best of luck and God's choicest blessings as you celebrate this day. Please receive our greetings. Before I say one or two more things, together with us, there are members of the conference here who are very close to the history of St. Thomas Aquinas. The closest among those who are here 
is Archbishop Peter Cairo. I just want him to come and greet you because he was in class number three to come here. Your Grace, just come please and uh, greet, greet uh, our congregation. He was once a seminarian, as you see him. Eh? So God is good. So on behalf of myself and others who are with him, as Archbishop Mwati has said that I'm number three, the first class came 1963, Archbishop Okoth, and others, there were about eight. The second class, uh, 64, that's a, for the rector who was here as a rector, Father Rafael Joy Professor, then I was number three, Makofi <laughs> Kwangu. <laughs> so I'm really very happy to so that here is where we are formed. And whatever we are doing the, in the parishes and also in the diocese, it is through this seminar of St. Thomas Aquinas. We are molded and we are very happy. So we pray, we say congratulations to the students, to the members of the staff, and continue praying for you but also you become good shepherds for the good example of St. Thomas Aquinas. Thank you very much, and God bless you all. Thank you very much, Your Grace, and thank you for coming. The next among those who are present is Archbishop Philip, but I'll skip him for the time being and proceed on to Bishop Dominic Mengich of Eldoret. Bishop, please welcome and greet the congregation. He's also not very far from the beginning. Eh? So, um, I came here in 1982, and we graduated in 1986, and I'm proud to say that in our class, we are three bishops who went through here. Uh, Bishop of Ngong, John Abala, uh, Bishop of Malindi, uh, Wilbert Lago. So, I'm so happy to be here, and uh, congratulations to the seminary. And on behalf of the people of the Diocese of Eldoret, Nikusema Pongezi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bishop Dominic Mengich, again for gracing our Diamond Jubilee with your physical presence. Archbishop Philip will have an opportunity to come and uh, declare his stand. <laughs> Myself, I came when St. Thomas Aquinas was 27 years old, the first time I came to St. Thomas, that was in 1990. Uh, and then I came back to St. Thomas Aquinas in 2007 as one of those terrible men that Uzi was talking about. <laughs> and I was here for some time to do the, my, the, the work and uh, the mandate had been given by the conference to help in formation so I have very fond memories of St. Thomas Aquinas as a seminary because it is the alma mater for very many, very many of us. It has given birth to many, many institutions of formation, almost all in this country, and particularly the five to which our uh, seminaries, seminarians of the diocese go to. That is the four major seminaries and the Diocesan Seminary of Christ the King in, uh, in Nyeri. We can say they are almost all of them associated with the, this institution. We come to thank God for the gift of this seminary. We want to thank, the, thank all those who went ahead of us, not just in setting up this institution, but those who have gone through this institution as students, as formators, as members of the technical team, the staff of this seminary, because all of them and each one of them has played an important role in making St. Thomas Aquinas what it is and making it able to celebrate the, the Diamond Jubilee on this day. We encourage our seminarians, all of us here on this aside, was seated the way you are seated. So feel encouraged, feel encouraged. We pray for you. The vocation to serve God as a priest is a beautiful vocation, very beautiful vocation. 
It's a vocation in which you find yourself experiencing humility at the, at the, very, at the very best because you are doing the work of God as if God himself were working with these people. It's a very humbling, humbling experience. We encourage you. I bring you the greetings, not just of uh, the chairman alone, but the entire conference of bishops. Many of our bishops would have liked to come here today to be with you. But you know the dynamics of pastoral work are not a straight line. Many times we would like to come and congregate on important occasions like this one, but because of those commitments, it does not always work. But the representation we have here is already very good. We thank the bishops who are with us spiritually, even if they were unable to come here physically. And we thank them for the support they are giving to the, to the seminary in the formation of our, our seminarians. I want to take this chance also through the nuncio to thank the Holy Father for the support we receive for the formation of our priests from the Holy See. Your Excellency, please pass our regards. For a long time, the Holy Father has a very special interest in the formation of priests across the world. And here, sometimes, he gives us even financial, financial support to make sure that we get priests to continue serving our country and other parts of the world. So thank you very much for the rector. Thank you very much, our dear seminarians and the staff of St. Thomas Aquinas. I wish you God's blessings. May God continue to bear fruit through you. Allow me then at this juncture to welcome Archbishop Philip Agnolo, the Archbishop of uh, Nairobi, who will also uh, declare his relationship to St. Thomas Aquinas and then say, say a word. Your Grace, welcome. So I said our apostolic nuncio, that's apostolic nuncio to Kenya and also to South Sudan. Uh, uh, your grace and your graces, grace Bishop Maurice Mahatia Makumba, the vice chairman of the Kenya Conference of the Catholic Bishops and the chairman of the SEC. Our, our grace, uh, Archbishop Peter Cairo, Bishop Dominic, my brothers, and also my sisters. Good afternoon. Yeah, I'm very proud to be here to celebrate these 60 years with our young seminarians who are also a precious gift from God to the church in Kenya. I see them, and also I remember the way I was many years ago. I lived here in 1983, 1983 82, I lived here, and I was as small as, as they are. And now I'm big. <laughs> I, was, I would play football. Uh, now I cannot play it, I break my leg. I was a scout myself and Bishop, uh, uh, Bishop Rotich and also Bishop Peter Kihara. We were scouts. I was one in responsible for the flags, the, the national flag and the Vatican flag. I was able to climb that, that bar up to the top without anything. But now don't try it, because I cannot try it now. <laughs> uh, the way I've seen it, as the chairman or the director has mentioned, is that we, it needs renovation. Don't climb it. It will come back with you down here. So don't try it. At that time, it was different. So I used to climb there. If the rope was off, we had, would bring it there. That was my also also my duty, and raise the flag every every time we were here. I was near that that bell there, the one that rings, just at, just just parallel to the to the to the hall here, and the church. That was my room somewhere there, number three sixty three something there. You check and find that's where I was. I sat on bench number two here on the left, near the piano. That's where I sat. <laughs> so that's where I sat for four years. We sat like that. We stayed like that. So I will tell you, you have wonderful memories here. And uh, remembering this, 
uh, and uh, putting together with what his uh, the excellent the nuncio preached today to us i remember father nicolas foliago who told us when we are finishing examinations in the dining hall there he came and told us now tell us you 40 years you are going what have you learned i was say, okay we were said explaining uh, systematic theology what to not and not he said i want to tell you this you have come here to know that you know nothing <laughs> if you came here to know everything that you say you are going to preach the people of god then i've done nothing uh, you call he come from here entering into the mystery the mystery the pastoral mystery of christ which will leave you wondering about many things especially the life of the christians who are also called to walk in the holiness to be holy because the call of holiness is for everybody so first of all be a christian first of all be what a christian be a good christian then you're going to be a priest so i think thank you very much you are for the the nuncio for reminding me also what we are supposed to be and uh, i really want to appreciate our well-being here uh, when we were there here and you who are here now the purpose of you being here today celebrating the 60 years is also to sustain the uh, this, this seminary uh, and you know one important way of living these days is uh, the development spiritual and everything even material development is not only building new things but also maintaining maintaining the old ones so that we have the legacy you can say this is where we have seen many of our um, forefathers going through and this is a legacy of history the picture there in the church of saint thomas aquinas i know you know you have seen it I mean, when i came here i was sitting in the front there because everywhere you sat he was looking at you <laughs> and i'm sure he is still looking at everybody when they are there <laughs> yeah i don't know who drew it who made that drawing but go and sit anywhere he's looking at you and uh, he gives a one he gives a wonderful impression about uh, that once you also have impressed his way of life as we were told today you also have a great help of his prayers of his endly prayers in the life that you are going to take on, to take on yourself the life of gratitude our prefect told us we have come here to gratify to say thank you to god it should be a life of gratitude to do everything in the memory of jesus christ when you go back into the, the vineyard of the lord he taught us that he taught us to say to be to gratify gratitude is also rooted in beatitudes that he taught and we know the beatitudes and the beatitudes that we learn as we grow in our daily life are the ones which give us the attitude our christian attitude and christian values so we want to we are here to consolidate with you in our all that we can do so as that you may live a happy life here and continue supporting the church of christ not only here in kenya but worldwide so we thank you and you look at us and even look at yourself know that you are coming this is where we were that's where we were also this bishop uh, bishop Cairo was also here he was my spiritual director thank you uh, thank you the apostolic nuncio for announcing announcing again the importance of the spiritual director yeah he was my spiritual director he is my spiritual director and he continues and so long as he's alive and as long as we live we look at i look at him and we look at him as an example to follow us so we are here also to encourage you to go into the life that you choose knowing that god has called you to serve him with gratitude living his beatitudes with proper attitudes of priestly life so thank you very much on this wonderful day i take the chance also to repeat personally the best wishes from his eminence uh, john cardinal Jue, who reminded me that i should wish you every good thing good being the an institution within archdiocese of nairobi uh, we are ready and willing always to enter into the plans of the kenya conference of catholic bishops in supporting the seminaries even to do better to do more 
we want to support that. So we are available, and I'm very happy whenever I've seen even our own priests who are teaching here, uh, who are teaching in the institutions coming back to tell us in Nairobi that this is what is needed. And we assure you, we shall do what we can to also to work in solidarity with the, uh, the, with the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops in formation of uh, students here. So thank you very much. Enjoy this day. It is your day. Rejoice in the Lord. And again I say, rejoice. Yeah, serve the Lord with gladness. Because every morning you start with that psalm, isn't it? Psalm 100, number 2. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. So continue, because what you are doing here is what you will carry on also in the days. And that's what the good things you do here, you remember them also with a lot of uh, fondness in the field outside there. Thank you, Asande Misana. I don't know what to come. Okay. Okay, I want to take this chance to welcome the Apostolic Nuncio to come and talk to us again. Uh, Sunday, you're welcome, the Apostolic Nuncio. Welcome indeed. Thank you very much. Your graces, and especially, of course, also our Archbishop Emeritus, Peter Cairo, and then our Lordship, the Bishop of uh, Eldoret, Dominic Mingic, the other priests here present, dear seminarians, religious brothers, sisters, people of God, to Msifu Jesu Christo. I mean, uh, you know, I, 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 I was, uh, when I heard these bishops talk, you hear like their heart is in it you know you come back to the seminary in a way it's like coming back home and that is the beautiful thing that it, though you might be away for years but still that seminary that is where many of your memories are by the way it's a long time eh? six years seven years and Kenya it can even be eight years at times eight years of beautiful things and being tortured and being done and all that is part of it all that is part of it before i forget i have to say something about bishop dominic kamengich he will say what what is this now now I, I when he was saying that he left the seminary in 86 i thought hey this man is my age so i looked it up and in fact we we are from the same year i didn't know that 1961 but he is like half a year older than me even though he looks half a year younger than me <laughs> And then, interestingly, his date of priestly ordination, I've seen this, the 14th of September, 87, no? 86, was the date of my diaconate ordination. That's maybe also why he was the first bishop that invited me to come to his diocese to visit there in Lotva, remember? Yes, no, that was even before COVID, I think it must have been, yes, yes, yes. So, that, I just wanted to say that, and uh, that there is a connection there. When the Archbishop uh, of Nairobi, His Grace Philip Agnolo, was talking about that as a boy, he, as a young seminary, he was climbing in the mast, in the flag mast, to untie the flag. I was even thinking about that this morning when you had not up this, this flag there of Kenya and of, 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 of the Holy See. I thought, hmm, let's see whether it opens. In fact, it did. <laughs> And sometimes it does not, yeah, then you have a problem. I myself was a scout, yes. And, um, but then I thought, you know, this is also a beautiful in, uh, image. That is what a priest has to do. He has to climb in that mast for the people to untie things, you know. In these days, I used, by the way, the same image in my sermon in Kitale. We are reading out of the letter to the Hebrews, that is very much this idea about Christ being the high priest and we stepping in the footsteps of Christ being that priest. And what the priest does is he communicates with God. He, he presents the prayers of the people of, to God. He pleads with God for his people. By the way, even as a priest, you have to ask yourself that. How many times do you really plead for your people? How many times do you really do that? Be honest, you know? Something, and that is our main thing we would have to do, to pray for our people. 
to pray for their particular concerns, for their particular intentions. And that is then also why you're truly a father, that you take care of the children, the children of God as we all are. So that is very important, I think. Another thing that was mentioned by one of the bishops, I think it was also, yes, Bishop Agnolo, Archbishop Agnolo, he was speaking about Archbishop Cairo being his uh, spiritual father, his spiritual director. I, it brought to my mind, I myself have a spiritual director in the Netherlands. He is actually, of course, he is a Benedictine monk. And uh, I know this man since 79. And since 79, I go there when I'm at home for confession. Try to have a person like that in your life. Somebody whom you can trust. By the way, it's not only about priests and seminarians, it's even for all of us. Somebody with whom you build up that kind of spiritual relationship through your discussion, through your conversation, through your confessions. You know, when I go there, when I go there for confession, Father Martin is his name. By the time I get in, he already knows what I want to say. Because he knows me so well. 79, what is that now? That is 23, 24 years nearly. That's a long time. No, 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 much longer. 44 years nearly. That's a long time. So you feel, you can feel at home with that spiritual father. He knows you better than you know yourself. He understands your inner movements. He understands your virtues. He knows also about your sins and secrets. And you can still come home to him. He doesn't condemn you. He is there with open arms. And that is the beautiful thing I think about being a spiritual father. That is, we all need a spiritual father. And we can all be a spiritual father. Or, by the way, a spiritual mother. You know? To have that kind of openness and a merciful attitude towards others. Actually, also... Speaking of seminary, of course, I have gone myself through a seminary very different from this one. By the way, our seminary is a very old seminary. Our seminary, the building is from the 13th century. So it's a very different. By the way, there was also in the church up there, actually, as, as His Grace said, even in my own seminary, there was this image of St. Thomas Aquinas. And it says, Bene scripsisti. I want to say, you wrote well about me. So to say, it's God who says that, of course. And... It's very much about that, about God in, in, at the seminary. And it also reminded me that in the 90s, when I was still a very young diplomat, 94, 98, I was in Khartoum. And I was teaching at the seminary as well. I taught canon law and church history. How beautiful it can be to be with seminarians, to teach them. Of course, for the seminarians, it's less beautiful. But for, for the... For the professor, it's a good thing also because, that's at least my experience, you have to get back into your material, you have to study it, because basically you have to translate it to the level of the student. You have to understand and see whether the student really understands what you're saying. Actually, many of these students of then, I speak about the 90s, they are, they are now priests and some of them even government officials in the government in South Sudan, or priests in the diocese there in South Sudan. And they always would, would tell me, Ah, Buna, you were the only professor for whom we really studied. I said, Liz, why? Oh, because each and every class, you started to ask us questions. Just not so much, by the way, to catch somebody, but much more to understand and to see whether the students understood what I had been explaining last time, so from there to pick it up again and to go continue teaching. Beautiful experience, I think, for all your staff members who are here. It's a great grace to be able to study and to, 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 to teach at a seminary. Let's use that grace, not for ourselves, but for the students, because they are the future of the church. It is on them that the kingdom of God builds students grow, not only in intellectual formation, but also, as it was mentioned, in human formation, spiritual formation. Be that mature man in Christ to, on whom others really can build. I think that is very important. Because you can be very good intellectually, and it is very easy, especially in a seminary with many students, it is very easy to remain under the radar. So to say, you do your thing, 
you do your grades, and you know, I mean, who cares, frankly speaking? And your, 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 your formators, they don't see so much because you're over 100. How do you follow that, basically? That's a difficulty, by the way, for big seminaries. How do you follow each and every student? How does that exactly work? Frankly speaking, it's nearly impossible. If the student is not dedicated, and if the student himself is not transparent, even for a formator, it's at times very difficult to understand who that student is exactly. And he might go through the whole course, and he might do all his exams. He might be quite clever. But quite clever is not enough to become a priest. It's about human formation, it's about human maturity, and also, and especially going together, it goes all together, sp spiritual maturity. Because if not, that priest, that young priest, is going to create havoc in a parish. And we have many examples of that. So therefore also, that's something also, both for the formation, for the form formators, and also for the students, you need dedication, you need commitment. It is not enough to do it just nusu nusu. You need to do it with your whole body and mind to give everything. For a formator, it means a lot, by the way. It means you have basically, in many ways, you have to sacrifice your private life as well. You cannot say, I'm a formator here, and then I do it there and do whatever I want to do. No, because these students, they see you. They see you even when you go out and they listen. Students are like social media. They hear and see everything. <laughs> and you might not know, but they know. So therefore, once again, great vocation, both of you, formators, seminarians, to grow in, in, the, in that wisdom of Christ that we talked about today, about this depth of knowledge of Christ, the maturity of Christ. Let's work on it. Let's give, put our hearts into it for the kingdom of God. And basically, at least I speak for myself, for your own happiness. Because somebody who follows Christ, somebody who really desires to be, to follow in the footsteps of the Lord, he will find that happiness and fulfillment in life that God promises for each and every one who leaves behind father, mother, brother, sister, house and children for the kingdom of God. Thank you very much. A hearty clap for Abuna, 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 Abuna. A hearty clap for the Nuncio. Thank you, Your Excellency. Allow me now to invite all of us to a session of gifts. Our, verse, our first gift goes to His Excellency Hubertus van Megan, the Nuncio to Kenya and South Sudan. May I ask May I ask uh, the Chair, Seminary Episcopal Commission, to present this gift for us. That is a gift, Jumbo Africa. <laughs> Welcome. Today, with a gift to our Abuna. We have a student who is an artist. He drew Abuna <laughs> and you would wish to present the gift to him. Yes, you could help him to open. Open, please.
Does he look like him? <laughs> this was me 15 years ago. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Alsala, our artist. May I invite uh, Most Reverend uh, Peter Cairo to present this gift to His Grace Philip Pagnolo. Thank you. And may I ask uh, Your Grace Philip Agnolo to present the gift to Archbishop Emeritus Peter Cairo. <laughs> That's yours. Thank you very much. May I invite uh, our seminary chairperson, Seminary Episcopal Commission, to receive his gift from His Lordship Dominic Kimengech. Bishop of Eldred. Thank you. May, uh, may I retain you, Your Lordship, <laughs> and Your Grace? May I retain you kindly? Okay. May you receive your gift from our seminary chairperson for the Seminary Episcopal Commission. Thank you very much. We have a gift, gifts to our rectors, all our rectors who are here present, kindly come forward. And I will ask our rector, very Reverend Father Kiplimo, to present the gifts. Our rectors from various seminaries here present, please welcome. We begin with uh, the rector, St. Matthias Mulumba, very reverend Father Douglas Mwija. A club for Father. Thank you. Here comes the rector, St. Matthias, St. Augustine Senior Seminary. <laughs> rector, St. Mary Smolo, Father Michael. Diego, or his representative, Father Ernest, you could pick the gift for, for him. A gift, uh, thank you, a gift to the rector, a Catholic University of Eastern Africa. Any representative? Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. We have a gift for KCCP Secretary General. We have also a gift to Brothers St. Peter Clever who served here for long, a gift to brothers of St. Peter Clever. We have a gift to, yes, welcome brother, welcome. Mm -hmm. We have a gift to Benedictine Formation House. I think we finish the session for gifts. Let us clap for ourselves. As we have been told by those who have given us a speech here, our seminary is 60 years. And we have been warned, especially by the scouts, not to climb up there because you can come down with that mass. It is time now to do a contribution towards the first lifting of our seminary. 
May I invite our rector to invite Most Reverend uh, Philip Agnolo to usher us in in the Self-Reliance Program. Um, yeah, Chris, as an old student of this seminary, one among many, may I welcome you now to lead us in this session where we, we bring you what we bring whatever we have so that we can be able to do one or two, uh, two things for this seminary and uh, please welcome let's welcome miss grace with a clap Maybe before we begin again, we should appreciate very much, like Bishop, uh, as Bishop said, Bishop Morris Mohatia, we should appreciate very much what the holy, uh, what the propaganda feed does for us, contributing every year through the nuncio. Thank you very much, your yeah, excellent nuncio, and again send our good wishes and our kindness, our kindness and our thank you to the uh, propaganda feed and the Holy See. Thank you. So we add to that as we bring something. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Okay. So I will just call and he will, he will talk. So seminary community, very reverend Father Rector. So. The seminary community includes the students, the staff, and the support staff. We invite the rector to present our contribution. And the students and all of us present to... We wish to spend very little time possible. Kindly, members of our community, St. Thomas Aquinas, the staff, the students' body, as they announce number to syndicate, we should take two minutes to do this. So we have the seminary community. The seminary community have uh, 380,000. Well, that's not the same. The same? Okay. Good. The marriage group encounter has given us 28,000. A very good afternoon to you. How will we come the to the, the end of, of the celebration? That is a, a 60th year's anniversary from here, St. Thomas Aquinas Seminary in Nairobi. Archdiocese of Nairobi right here in Karen and uh, we have been able to witness some of the things uh, uh, they have been able to talk even from the bishop, then, uh, from the uh, archbishop that is Hubert is by Megan, the apostolic nuncio to Kenya and South Sudan and uh, we and still continue as Capuchin TV to congratulate uh, the St. Uh, Thomas Aquino Seminary uh, Fraternity for this achievement. Uh, you. Leaving you with the normal programming to our studio back to you but before that I want to say thank Thank you to the team that has been behind the camera. We have Felix Juma, we have Anthony Simeo, we have we have Kelvin Zissa, we have um uh, 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 producer uh, and uh, many others and back in studio we have Peter Mwangi we say thank you to all of you for making this uh, event uh, to come into success may God bless you see you next time
Seminari kuu ya mtakatifu Thomas Aquinas iliyoko eneo la Karen Jimbo Kuu la Nairobi inawalika wote waliohitimu kutoka shule hiyo pamoja na marafiki kwenye sherehe ya kasitini ya uwepo wao. Uh, we celebrate the 60 years uh, of the seminary. We are not in, we are not only uh, ending there. We look also into the future. Marking 60 years It's a great time to self-evaluate ourselves. St. Thomas becomes and remains part of our history and we remain part of its history. It reminds us of very many years ago where even some of us were not born but we are enjoying the fruits of those who are our forefathers. Sherehe hiyo itafanyika Ijumaa tarehe 27 mwezi huu wa Januari. Ibada ya misa takatifu itaanza saa 4 asubuhi ikiongozwa na askofu mkuu Bart van Megen, mwakilishi wa baba mtakatifu Francisco hapa nchini na nchini Sudan Kusini. We are uh, inviting all our former students, all our former students, not only former students but also friends. Mbali na ibada ya misa pia kutakuwa na mchango maalum wa kuendeleza shule hiyo iliyoanzishwa miaka sitini iliyopita. Kumbuka haba na haba hoja za kibaba. Kile utakachotoa kitasaidia pakubwa katika kuendeleza shule hiyo. We are also asking that they come and assist us in some little donation so that we can give a new face to our mother Alma Mater St. Thomas Aquinas Seminary. Tumia Mpesa Pay Bill Business number 5242 nambari ya kaunti 222890 au piga simu kwa baba rekta padri lelei kwa nambari 0722565 Matukio haya yote utayapata kwenye runinga uipendayo ya Capuchin pamoja na mitandao yetu ya kijamii. kutazama runinga ya Capuchin kitambulisho chako katoliki Capuchin TV kitambulisho katoliki You are watching Capuchin TV For any complaints comments or compliments on our programming you can either write to us on info at capuchintv.co.ke or you can call us directly on 0717424866 Your complaint shall be addressed within 7 days. Remember to keep a copy of your communication with us. Keep watching Capuchin TV. Your Catholic identity. Na hii Capuchin TV ni chombo kizuri sana na chombo hiki kazi yake ni evangelization. Kwa hivyo ningeomba mufanya mambo matatu. Jambo la kwanza tafadhali wewe enda uangalie Capuchin TV. Kuna mambo mazuri sana, kuna maombi, kuna watoto wanafanya mambo mazuri, kuna mafundisho, kuna misa takatifu kila siku. Kwa hivyo tafadhali ukipata nafasi utazane utazame Capuchin TV. Jambo la pili uwaombe kwa hiyo kazi mzuri ambayo wanafanya. Manake ndio TV ya kipekee ya Catholic na mabishop wanaisupport kabisa manake inafanya kazi mzuri. Kama leo kama kuna watu wako Italy wangependa kuangalia what is happening leo wangepata nafasi. Kwa hivyo muwaombe sana kwa hiyo kazi nzuri ambao wanafanya na jambo la tatu mwa support. Wewe wana paybill namba watumie hata ni kama ni shilingi mbili. Kwa hivyo tafadhali mwa support mwatumie kitu kidogo kwa paybill namba.
na mambo hayo ili waweze kuendelea na hiyo kazi. Kwa hivyo asatendi father kwa hiyo kazi mzuri ambayo wanafanya. Tuendelee kufanya kazi. Payable number 5106789 Account name Caps TV